Hi. The purpose of this video is to discuss determining the electronic and molecular geometries around an atom within a molecule. Before we look at a few examples, it's important that we review a few terms just so that you understand what I'm talking about when I mention these terms frequently throughout this video. The first is electron, electron groups. An electron group consists of any type of bond or lone pair. So that'd be a single, double, or triple bond or a lone pair. And we typically, typically talk about these electron groups as being attached or around the central atom or atom of interest in our molecule. The second term is electronic geometry. That's the geometrical arrangement of electron groups around that central atom or atom of interest. That arrangement is impacted by the desire to minimize the repulsion between those electron groups. The third and final term is molecular geometry. This is the geometrical arrangement of the actual atoms around that central atom or atom of interest. If the, all of the uh, atoms attached to the central atom are um, attached by single bonds, then the electronic and molecular geometries are the same. However, if the uh, atoms are not all attached by a single bond, meaning they are attached perhaps by a double or a triple bond, or if instead of being an atom, they are a lone pair, now you will have a different geometry for the molecular geometry than you will for the electronic geometry. And this is because double bonds, triple bonds, and lone pairs take up more space around that center atom than does a singly bonded substance or uh, atom. There are five basic electronic geometries, and they are summarized on the chart in front of you. They range from two electron groups connected to the central atom to six electron groups connected to the center atom. And there are two very important pieces of information you need to know about each electronic geometry. The first is the number of electron groups around the center atom, and the second is the name or bond angle of that particular geometry. So in the case of two electron groups, it is a linear electronic geometry with a bond angle of 180 degrees, 180 degrees. So there are five basic electronic geometries. They range from two electron groups to six electron groups around a central atom. From those five basic electronic geometries, you end up with 15 different possible molecular geometries. And there are two factors that you need to consider when deciding which molecular geometry you have. The first is the number of regions of high electron density or number of electron groups around the center atom. The second is the number of lone pairs on the center or atom of interest. If they are the same, as shown here in the second column of this table, then the electronic and molecular geometries are the same. So if you have two electron groups and no lone pairs, you have a linear electronic geometry and a linear molecular geometry. However, for example, if you have four electron groups and two lone pairs, then you are over here and your molecule is bent, okay, is bent. And the bond angle ideally is 109 and a half for four electron groups, but, but if, you, if two of those are lone pairs, it is much less than 109 and a half. We won't get into specifics right this moment. Let's look at a couple of examples so that we understand how to arrive at these conclusions for a couple of different scenarios. Today, we'll look at three examples, NH3, ammonia, CH2O, or formaldehyde, and CH3, COOH, or acetic acid. Let's start with NH3. The first step is drawing the correct Lewis structure. And so I'm not going to talk about how we arrive at that correct structure in this video, but I do have other videos on that if you are interested. But here is the Lewis structure for NH3. Uh, and you will notice, if you count the number of electron groups around the center atom, there are four. 
There are three NH single bonds and one lone pair. So we're looking at four electron groups. Okay, and I'm going to note that up here. So we got four EG electron groups, and we have one LP, which is a lone pair. This leads us to two conclusions. Okay, the first is an electronic geometry. So I'll just do abbreviated elect here. Uh, and the electronic geometry of four electron groups is called tetrahedral. The molecular geometry, I'll just do MOL for the time being, for this particular substance for four electron groups and one lone pair is known as trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal. So four electron groups got us an electronic geometry of tetrahedral. It got us a molecular geometry because it was four electron groups, uh, one of which was a lone pair of trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal. Let's look at a second example. This time we'll look at CH2O. And again, I'm going to start, oops, sorry, I'm going to start by drawing the dot structure. So we're going to put the carbon in the middle this time. It is connected to the oxygen by a double bond, and each hydrogen is single bonded to that carbon. So again, uh, we are going to count the number of electron groups around the center carbon atom now, and I count three electron groups. The double bond at the top counts as one electron group. So I have three electron groups, and I have zero lone pairs on that center atom. Only looking at the carbon now, no lone pairs on that center atom. That means that the two geometries, electronic and molecular here, are going to be the same. And this is known to have a trigonal planar electronic and molecular geometry. Trigonal planar electronic and molecular geometry for this particular molecule. We'll look at one last one. This is a little more complex. This is acetic acid. So we're going to draw its dot structure. And you'll have to give me a second here. It's going to take just a moment uh, to draw this out. Now, in this uh, structure, and you might be asking as I'm drawing, you might be going, which atom do we care about? Because there's not just one central atom. So we could have this first carbon, or we could have the second carbon, or we could have this oxygen. So I've numbered them one, two, and three here. And we could look at the geometry, both electronic and molecular geometry here, of either of these three atoms. Let's just, for sake of argument, look at number three. So let's look at this oxygen. So for that oxygen, I still, still see four electron groups, two lone pairs and two single bonds. So I see four electron groups, and I just noted I see two lone pairs. So I'm going to have a different electronic and molecular geometry here. The four electron groups is going to tell me that the electronic geometry is tetrahedral. The four electron groups where two of them are lone pairs tells me that the molecular geometry is bent, is bent. The molecular geometry is bent. And we could repeat this process for carbon one and for carbon number two in this molecule. We won't do that in the interest of time right now, but it is a good thought exercise for you to repeat that process. In summary, when you are determining the molecular shape, the first step is to draw the correct Lewis structure. The second step is to count the number of electron groups by the way 
This determines the electronic geometry. The third step is to count the number of lone pairs. And of course, when we say count, we mean on the center or atom of interest. If you combine the number of electron groups and the number of lone pairs, it tells you the molecular shape or molecular geometry. Unfortunately, I can't give you an easy shortcut for remembering the electronic and molecular geometries. It is something you do have to memorize. Personally, I recommend flashcards uh, to help you get that down. Make sure that you know not only the number of electron groups and the number of lone pairs associated with each geometry, but the name and the bond angle of that particular geometry.